combo blocks, um, but he has that mental toughness to, to, to consistently do that um, day in, day out. So so it's been it's been fun to see those those new guys come in and compete. General, what's it been like to work with the two new linebacker coaches and just understand the, mm -hmm. the continuity of what you guys try to do up front is, is, is all, a, all a unit? Yes, yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, both Coach McDaniel and, and Coach Centum, they bring a, lot, a tremendous amount of experience from their playing time and also their, their uh, long co coaching career as well. Um, with, with Coach McDonald, uh, excuse me, Coach uh, McDaniel, um, you know, he, he brings a lot of, a tremendous amount of experience uh, with linebacker play and, and getting our guys, our young guys that haven't had as much experience. We're seeing those guys tremendously getting better each and every day in practice. Coach Centum, he's taking on a, a very talented outside backer room and they haven't missed a beat, you know, just really carrying a, carrying a torch moving forward and, and they're constantly producing in, in practice and it's carrying over to the, to the scrimmages as well. So it's been fun to watch those guys. How does a, scrim, how does a spring look, you know, not only without Johnny and Keith, but without a lot of experienced guys in your room? How do, how do you handle that as, as you're now 10 practices in and have five more to go? Yeah, so you know, not not having guys that have that have played and started three years in a row sure. is is new, is fresh. But um, but to have guys that have played football, college football, where where you've got uh, Dennis Briggs and you got Anthony Johnson and and Alex Bray was a guy that mixed in a lot for us last year. So we've got guys like T. Ray Edwards that are familiar with the scheme, and so and also the way we practice and prepare. So um, those things are new for them. And at this point, with ten practices in. You know, and I know I know it's uh, fair to say that those guys are new, but it's we're all we're all here now, and and um, you know it's been good to get these guys some reps in different situations, and that's the way we prepare our guys um, with situational football, and to get those guys familiar with um, the, the area of the field, the situation of down the distance, and and so each and every day we get out there and practice. Those guys are getting more and more comfortable, um, but at the same time, it's getting more and more challenging with the with the looks we get from the offense. So it's been good to stress them. But also good to adapt them in our in our in our in our program. Coach, a couple of second year players look like they've taken a little bit of a, a, a leap here in the spring. Alex Bray, who you mentioned, and Jeremiah Warren. Um, what, are, what have you seen from those guys, and how how their off season go for? Them? Yeah, uh, Alex Bray. Um, you know, he put on a, a good amount of weight, so he's in the two seventies, close to two eighty. Um, but both of those guys had significant reps in the scrimmage this past Saturday, and showed some some improvement. Um, Jeremiah was very productive, um, got in the backfield a couple of times to produce um, behind the line of scrimmage and also uh, just holding the point, playing with extension, being patient and um, taking his opportunities when they come to him. Um, Alex Bray having, having uh, disciplined rush lanes, uh, affecting the pocket that way in pass rush, but also helping us on the early downs in, in terms of stopping the run too. So both of those guys, the more reps they get, uh, the more comfortable they get and, and uh, they're able to use their, their skill set to, to help this defense. Uh, they play a lot of football for us at this point, and so they know the defense, and so it's been fun to see those guys, and, and whether we play multiple fronts, uh, they can do it all. Bray looks like a quick twitch guy. Do you think he's, has he added enough of bulk, you think, to be an every down player in the Big Ten? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, he's a guy that, that has the frame. He's going to continuously add weight. Last year, he traveled with us every week, so he wasn't part of the, that developmental lift. And so we haven't even scratched the surface in terms of how his body is going to continue to develop, but it's moving in the right direction. But on top of that, he's a tough football player. He was a wrestler through high school, so he loves contact. He doesn't shy away. Um, my mind goes right to a, a double team. He like truly demolished, demolished an inside run drill, um, but, but he continues to do things like that for us. And uh, more reps and, and chances he gets in practice, the, the more opportunities he's going to continuously shine that way. How important are those two guys, those second year guys, for your rotation yeah. this year? It's very important because those are guys that may not have played much uh, in, in the past season, but they've, they've been around our system. They know the communication, uh, they know the calls. And so to have guys like that that are competing and practicing at a high level, uh, it helps the young guys, uh, the true freshmen that come in, and it also helps the older guys, the transfer that come in to, to kind of see how we practice, uh, to set the ex expectation, but also to compete for that starting role as well. And so uh, to have a, a group of solid six guys 
that we can see playing and rotating and keeping fresh in the game is something to look forward to. Uh, and it's been a good environment for that in terms of the football one-on-one and, and just the stresses of, of competing at the high level versus our offensive line and, and offense in general. Jay, when you look at your track record, what you were able to do with, you know, at the, at the nose tackle position, Calvin Avery senior year, Denzel Jackson's you know, time here, what are you looking for in that position specifically when you go out in the portal and get a sledge? And then how does that, how do you, what technique are you looking for for guys that can come in and be like that? Yeah, we, we, we want guys that create contact and not avoid contact at that position. Um, we want guys that, you know, that can have the ability, the skill set to bend and change the direction. Uh, body control. Um, typically, those guys are bigger guys, a lot of body mass. Obviously, we want strength, but we want guys that have that contact balance when they bend. They're playing with independent footwork. When they're taking on double teams, they can extend and control their block, but also take on a double team and still split it with, with good body control. So we're looking for for uh, for size, for strength, but also the ability to bend and change direction. Correct me if I'm wrong, but for somebody like T. Rod. It's been a transition for him to kind of learn that position as he as he got here. Is have you been pleased with the incremental development you've seen out of him as, as time has gone on? Yeah, that's a great great point. Uh, with T. Rod, he came from originally came from a uh, predominantly four down structure, right. but what what intrigued us was the clips we saw of T. Rod was practice film of him repping our defense. So we saw him at a nose <laughs> position, and that's what caught our eye, and so. That transition was was good for him because he actually enjoyed doing that at that time, and and so um, to get him in our system and now being a the the uh, another year in our program um, and are having to rep him and he's producing games in Big Ten games, a uh, confidence is continuously going through the roof, and he's produced for us this spring, and we just want that to continue to to move forward to the season. Uh, have a good year this year. Because he... last year you had uh, Coach Henry try to celebrate with the draft with all those guys getting picked. This year looks like your your turn. <laughs> Are you excited about the draft for you, you, the guys you've been coaching with, working with all these years? I appreciate the question. That's a win for Illinois. You know, right. Coach B uh, does a tremendous job of leading our program and, and helping our guys be in a healthy environment where they can they can develop their bodies. Um, that they can they can uh, develop their their minds spiritually, and uh, and obviously their skill set on the field. So um, all that stuff translates to success on the field and success beyond beyond here. And you know I'm truly uh, uh, blessed to, to to have coached the, the young men that I've coached, and uh, they got they're going to do great things moving forward. So I'm excited about what's what's in store for those guys. But certainly, uh, it's a win for our Illini football family and the fans. When their names get called, is there? I'm certain there's a sense of pride from you guys, right? When you hear Johnny's name go, or Keith. I mean, what's that? What's that going to feel like for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of those guys. It, you know, whenever whenever their name is called, I, you know, I've, I've been proud proud of those guys since day one. I tell the guys I'm coaching now, I'm proud of them. After even after a, a bad practice, good play, bad play, next play. You know, um, sure. So I'm excited about those guys. Um, you know, another thing that I, I typically say is 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 the greatest test of the heart is the is the praise of the people. So, uh, you know, one time they'll they'll be cheering, the next time they'll be they'll be saying, "Hey, get get them, get them out of here." So. But anyways, no, it, I'm, I'm excited about what's, what's in store for those guys, and um, and and also I'm excited about co continuously coaching these these guys I got in front of me. That helps your room, right? When you have guys drafted, I, it's got to be the younger guys got to look and that to say, hey, that can, that's me, hopefully. You know, is that is that right or not? That that's oh yeah, that's the standard. You know, yeah. it's, it's the, the standard is set. You go in a D line room right now. You look on the wall. You're going to see Whitney Merciless. You're going to see Mo Gardner. Um, you're right. going to see Corey Legit. You know, you're going to see those guys on the wall, and so. Um, you, you come to University of Illinois. You wanna you wanna make those guys proud, right? You see Sidney Rice. You wanna you wanna set continuously carry the carry the torch, so to speak. Sure. And um, now now you're gonna have Keith and Johnny on that wall. And so um, to have those guys uh, walk walk these hallways and and uh, eat this training table and, and lift these weights. Um, you know, it makes a, a young guy that's coming in and we're recruiting to see, hey, I can I can do the same thing, maybe greater things in store. And you welcome, you welcome those guys back, I know, and they come back, don't they? And that's mm -hmm. after they play in the NFL, they seem to come back there and hang out when they can. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, in fact, they were uh, a couple of guys came back this past uh, Saturday for yeah. scrimmage one. Yeah, they were watching the game, the practice, and it, I heard their voices. So it felt like they were in practice. So I, I wanted to give them some jerseys and pads and throw them in there, but. 
Uh, but no, it's, it's good to have those guys back and have them in the, in the facility, and uh, they're always welcome. Coach, yeah, when you go, with I have one more guy. Go ahead. The big personalities are those two guys. Mm -hmm. Is that hard to replace? Johnny Keith had, you know, seemed to be kind of otherworldly type guys. Is that hard to replace? Or uh, is that easy? Well, personality-wise, I don't want to don't want to necessarily replace them, and I want all our guys to be themselves, okay. you know. And um, you know, we got some special guys. Some, some some guys with different from different backgrounds, and they they all bring their their gifts and talent talents, and uh, we welcome them all. We just don't affirm every practice. When you go to the portal, you're hoping to get an alpha, uh, you know, a playmaker type of guy. Is has Anthony Johnson uh, been that guy? Have you seen him step up in practice? And... All those guys are alphas. So, yeah, yeah, every, <laughs> everybody we bring in are alphas now. So no, it's, all those guys are are special. Jamo, you briefly mentioned it, but even on the front, you had a Johnny Keith and Denzel. You made it a point last year to play an Alex Bryant, to play a Jeremiah Warren last year. Are you seeing the fruits of that labor this spring and in their development and, and, and getting something out of that experience? Yeah, great question. It, you know, it certainly knocks knocks the butterflies out, right? You, you put them in a moment when it's the sixty plus thousand. And in his and his third third down, and Alex Bray's in there versus Wisconsin, and he he defends his gap and he makes a tackle. You know, in that in that heat of the moment, you know that that starts to starts to boost some energy in that guy. You know, some confidence. And so any any time we can we can put young guys in those situations, guys that we trust, we depend on um, that that they've earned that. Like a guy like Alex Bray and Jeremiah, they've earned those opportunities. Uh, and to be able to reward them with those moments and, and see them have success is, is special. It's why we, why we coach, why I coach. I know you kind of go hand in hand with the outside linebackers, but Zeke seems to be repping with you. I know Gabe has in the past. What do those guys add just versatility wise to your front as a oh, yeah. whole defense? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, anytime you can get a guy that's both powerful and, and, and athletic like a Zeke, like a Gabe, and uh, mix them up front, it, it, creates a, it creates a mismatch for that opposing O line. And Zeke, has been one of those guys this spring that we've 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 uh, put him in those situations um, to to play play as a three technique to play as a four eye and, and we expect him to be able to give us an extra edge on on third down or pass early down pass situations. A lot of experience between him and Briggs. What, 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 yeah. do, they, what do they bring yeah. to the group? They're, they're the two old guys on, on the on the team on the roster, so they a lot of guys call them uncle. So <laughs> both of those guys, but um, no, but yeah, again with experience and and. Zeke is very instinctive, you know, so he's a guy that, that finds a way to make plays. And so anytime you got a guy on the field that, that can that can produce for you and uh, that's going to play hard and, and do their job, that's, that's always good, a win for the defense. Early impressions of the freshmen, the three you got in your group right now? Oh, they're, they're special. They're special. Uh, Didi scored over a night. He had the highest grade in, in, uh, in the scrimmage just because he does everything right. He's intentional about his footwork, his, his extension and finishing. And Eddie is a load in the inside. He bends very well, like I was talking about earlier. Plays at extension, and Angelo McCollum was the most productive out of the entire D line. Mm -hmm. you know, like every time I looked up, he had a sack, <laughs> and so. Um, but that's what he did in high school. Yeah. You know, he he would wreck he would wreck the whole game, and so. Um, How does he do that? You know, so, yeah. he's not the longest guy. So how, how does yeah. he do that? He's got long arms, man. It's, it, you, you know, you, you look at him, you don't know it, but he's got long arms. He's got big hands, and uh, he's just got a good feel for the game, and he's explosive, and so uh, he, he just finds a way. He just finds a way. He's very special. Quick change of direction, um, tremendous body control, right? And, and he's got long arms, so when he when he takes on a, a base block, he anchors, he locks. He got he has his eyes. He reminds me of four from last year, man. <laughs> reminds me of four. He's got number forty four, but you know he reminds me of four. But he's, he's special. All three of those guys are special. Does Demetrius? Demetrius? He seems to have some Johnny Newton qualities about him too. Um, coming in, have you seen that from him? Or? Yeah, you know, Demetrius. Um, you know, like I said, he's he's uh, very intelligent and um, he's never in a bad spot, and so he won't won't, won't put himself in a bad spot. Uh, plays with good footwork, good extension, and he, he works to finish. So he's he's graded really high on the, in the scrimmage for us.